Hello, this is George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com. Today we're going to be looking at M Tracker 3D and MO2 in Final Cut Pro. This is going to be a basic workflow tutorial. So you see that I have my clip here in my timeline. This was a 60 frames per second clip in a 23.98 timeline. So we have went ahead and slowed that down by selecting our clip, going to our read time tools and clicking automatic speed so that we now have this nice slow moving video. The next thing I'd like to do is add some contrast. As you can see, this video was shot in a log format. So we're going to go to our color correction tools and very quickly just add some contrast to our video. And that is going to help the tracker do a much better job quicker. Of course, it does not look pretty. That's okay because we're going to make color adjustments later. So our next step is to add M Tracker 3D in our effects, pick up M Tracker 3D, drag it onto your clip, and you'll see that you have the track button over your footage as well as your track button over in your inspector. Let's click that to track. All right, now that we are done tracking, our next step is to pick a position for MO2. So you can see here that you have your position icon located in your inspector in M Tracker 3D. Let's select that target icon and we now have our 3D gizmo available. Now, as always, the gizmo is going to be affected by anything in the scene in 3D space. Something else that's kind of neat is if you watch that gizmo, you can see that the lens distortion is being taken into consideration as well as we shot this on an extremely wide angle lens. So our next step is, of course, to pick a position. To do this, we can click a position. And if we have multiple positions, we can do so by holding command and we can click additional positions in our scene. For this example, I'm only going to be using one. I also know that I want my model to come in upright. So I'm going to click a new position and hold the shift key down and it is going to lock that orientation in place. I'm gonna scrub through just to make sure that's where I want it because I know that my scene ends, so I actually want that to be centered. So holding shift down, I'm going to select right here so that that is centered up. All right, our next step is to add MO2. You are able to add MO2 as a title or as a generator. In this lesson, we are going to be using the generator because we are going to make some color corrections later and we want to use that generator so that it is not affecting the video beneath. So if you know that you're gonna make any sort of color adjustments on MO2, be sure to use the generator when using Final Cut Pro. Let's drag that onto our clip. Let's make sure that that is perfectly aligned. Okay, our next step is actually we need to copy our track. So let's go into M Tracker 3D, copy track. Now, by selecting MO2, we can go in to our generator and we need to go to add M Tracker 3D data. Okay, the next step is very important we need to delete our default camera. We do this because M Tracker 3D already has a camera above our 3D group, and this new camera holds all of our tracked information. To delete the default camera, right click and delete. Our next step is to make sure that we have an alpha channel in our background so that we can see our video beneath. So we open scene settings, background, and we can go to Type Alpha Channel. Next, I'm going to turn Builder Mode on in MO2 just so we can move a little bit quicker for these next steps. I'm also going to turn off my contrast in my clip now so we can get a little bit better view of what's going on. Back in MO2, we can now see if we click our 3D group our 3D group gizmo is there placed perfectly in our scene from M Tracker 3D. So now why don't we add a model? With our 3D group selected, go to add, model. I already have something imported, which is this fun robot. Another neat trick is when adding a model into your M Tracker 3D group, 
you can hold option down and that's going to add your model directly into your group with all of your parameters set to the 3D groups parameters. So we're going to add that by holding down option and you can see now that our robot is there floating where we want it. If you ever add a model and it's not already in the 3D group and zeroed out on the parameters, simply drag that model into your 3D group and go to reset all of your parameters. I know for this, I don't want this bottom piece of my robot, so I'm going to select it and I'm just going to uncheck that to turn it off. All right, let's check how that looks so far. Great. Also, it's important to note that anytime you add, scale, and position your model, you must remember to place it correctly above the picked surface. Otherwise, the model will place itself half underground. So the best way to make sure is to set the model's anchor point to the bottom, then reset its position and make additional adjustments such as scale and rotation, etc. I'm going to go to where my scene is ending I'm going to go back to my model here and let's scale that up just a bit. I also know that my robot is a floating flying robot, so I'm going to go on the Y axis and just bring him up slightly so that he appears as though he's floating. Our next step is to add a shadow catcher. So let's turn beauty mode on now. We're going to go back to our 3D group in MO2. And again, we're going to add a model. And this time we're going to add a plane. And again, holding option down. So let's go to primitives, plane, hold option, click to add. And you can see that that is there and it's all zeroed out with those parameters. Now let's scale that up. The next step is to add a material to our plane to be our shadow catcher. So with our plane selected, we're going to add material, new material. Now that we have our materials options, let's scroll down until we find opacity and we're going to change that to shadow catcher. If we go over our robot and bring him down, you can see there's our shadow, but we need a little bit more light to better mimic the natural light in the scene. I think I want him down actually a little bit too, because I really like the way that looks. He's just kind of floating there over the ground. That's nice. All right, so now with our 3D group selected, let's go to add light Let's add a sphere and we're going to hold option down as well. With our light selected, you can see if we bring that up, not much of a shadow is really being cast yet. That's because we actually need to enable the shadows from our light. With our light selected, go into light and enable shadows. And let's turn our render shape off. In our position, we're going to bring that up until we start to see that shadow a little bit more natural there. Now I'm going to bring my intensity up and you can see that that shadow begins to get darker. All right, great. We are almost done. Now, why don't we change our environment to be a little bit better matching our overall scene. So back in scene settings, go to environment, select our environments tab, and we have all of these options pre-built. We're going to go to cloudy since it was a cloudy day. And you can see that playground is very similar to our scene. So let's click playground and hit OK. You are able to offset that slightly so that we can make it appear as though we are in that scene. You can see the clouds there reflecting on our robot. All right, the next step is to add a color grade to our robot to better mimic our log setting. 
So with MO2 selected, we are able to go into our color board just like any other video, and we can mess with our exposure and saturation, color, etc., to better match our log scene. All right, great. I'm also noticing that our robot is quite sharp in comparison to our natural scene. So we're going to go over to our camera settings and you can see here that we have a focus amount. Now, if we slide that up, you'll notice that our robot becomes very out of focus. We obviously don't want that, but let's just slide it back down and then move it until it feels as though that robot is better matching our log setting in our camera, which we did have our sharpness all the way off. All right, and now we can close that out. Let's see how that looks. Really nice. All right, our final step is to add a final color grade. To do this, we are going to select both of our clips click option G and create a compound clip. And we are going to add M film look for our final look for our robot. All right, once again, this has been George Edmondson with motionvfx.com showing you the basic workflow using M Tracker 3D and MO2 in Final Cut Pro. Have a good one.